Metamaterial, Wikipedia article audio A metamaterial is a material engineered to have a property that is not found in nature. They are made from assemblies of multiple elements fashioned from composite materials such as metals or plastics. The materials are usually arranged in repeating patterns, at scales that are smaller than the wavelengths of the phenomena they influence. Metamaterials derive their properties not from the properties of the base materials, but from their newly designed structures. Their precise shape, geometry, size, orientation, and arrangement gives them their smart properties capable of manipulating electromagnetic waves, by blocking, absorbing, enhancing, or bending waves, to achieve benefits that go beyond what is possible with conventional materials. History Electromagnetic Metamaterials Negative Refractive Index Classification Negative Index Single Negative Band Gap Double Positive Medium Bi-isotropic and bi-anisotropic. Chiral. FSS-based. Other types. Elastic. Acoustic. Structural. Nonlinear. Frequency bands. Terahertz. Photonic. Tunable. Plasmonic Applications Antennas Absorber Super Lens Cloaking Devices Appropriately designed metamaterials can affect waves of electromagnetic radiation or sound in a manner not observed in bulk materials. Those that exhibit a negative index of refraction for particular wavelengths have attracted significant research. These materials are known as negative index metamaterials. RCS reducing metamaterials. Seismic protection. Potential applications of metamaterials are diverse and include optical filters, medical devices, remote aerospace applications, sensor detection, and infrastructure monitoring, smart solar power management, crowd control, radomes, high-frequency battlefield communication and lenses for high-gain antennas, improving ultrasonic sensors, and even shielding structures from earthquakes. Metamaterials offer the potential to create super lenses. Such a lens could allow imaging below the diffraction limit that is the minimum resolution that can be achieved by conventional glass lenses. A form of invisibility was demonstrated using gradient index materials. Acoustic and seismic metamaterials are also research areas. Sound filtering Theoretical models Metamaterial research is interdisciplinary and involves such fields as electrical engineering, electromagnetics, classical optics, solid-state physics, microwave and antennae engineering, optoelectronics, material sciences, nanoscience and semiconductor engineering. Explorations of artificial materials for manipulating electromagnetic waves began at the end of the 19th century. Some of the earliest structures that may be considered metamaterials were studied by Jagadish Chandra Bose, who in 1898 researched substances with chiral properties. Carl Ferdinand Lindemann studied wave interaction with metallic helices as artificial chiral media in the early 20th century. Winston E. Koch developed materials that had similar characteristics to metamaterials in the late 1940s. In the 1950s and 1960s, artificial dielectrics were studied for lightweight microwave antennas. 
Microwave radar absorbers were researched in the 1980s and 1990s as applications for artificial chiral media. Negative index materials were first described theoretically by Victor Veselago in 1967. He proved that such materials could transmit light. He showed that the phase velocity could be made anti-parallel to the direction of pointing vector. This is contrary to wave propagation in naturally occurring materials. John Pendry was the first to identify a practical way to make a left-handed metamaterial, a material in which the right-hand rule is not followed. Such a material allows an electromagnetic wave to convey energy against its phase velocity. Pendry's idea was that metallic wires aligned along the direction of a wave could provide negative permittivity. Natural materials display negative permittivity, the challenge was achieving negative permeability. In 1999 Pendry demonstrated that a split ring with its axis placed along the direction of wave propagation could do so. In the same paper, he showed that a periodic array of wires and rings could give rise to a negative refractive index. Pendry also proposed a related negative permeability design, the Swiss roll. In 2000, Smith ETAL reported the experimental demonstration of functioning electromagnetic metamaterials by horizontally stacking, periodically, split ring resonators and thin wire structures. A method was provided in 2002 to realize negative index metamaterials using artificial lumped element loaded transmission lines in microstrip technology. In 2003, complex negative refractive index and imaging by flat lens using left-handed metamaterials were demonstrated. By 2007, Experiments that involved negative refractive index had been conducted by many groups. At microwave frequencies, the first, imperfect invisibility cloak was realized in 2006. An electromagnetic metamaterial affects electromagnetic waves that impinge on or interact with its structural features, which are smaller than the wavelength. To behave as a homogeneous material accurately described by an effective refractive index, its features must be much smaller than the wavelength. For microwave radiation, the features are on the order of millimeters. Microwave frequency metamaterials are usually constructed as arrays of electrically conductive elements that have suitable inductive and capacitive characteristics. One microwave metamaterial uses the split ring resonator. Photonic metamaterials, nanometer scale, manipulate light at optical frequencies. To date, sub wavelength structures have shown only a few, questionable, results at visible wavelengths. Photonic crystals and frequency selective surfaces such as diffraction gratings, Dielectric mirrors and optical coatings exhibit similarities to sub-wavelength structured metamaterials. However, these are usually considered distinct from sub-wavelength structures, as their features are structured for the wavelength at which they function and thus cannot be approximated as a homogeneous material. However, material structures such as photonic crystals are effective in the visible light spectrum. The middle of the visible spectrum has a wavelength of approximately 560 nm. Photonic crystal structures are generally half this size or smaller, that is epsilon rr. In this case, it is not necessary that either or both epsilon r and r be negative for backward wave propagation. Frequency selective surface based metamaterials block signals in one waveband and pass those at another waveband. They have become an alternative to fixed frequency metamaterials. They allow for optional changes of frequencies in a single medium, rather than the restrictive limitations of a fixed frequency response. 
These metamaterials use different parameters to achieve a negative index of refraction in materials that are not electromagnetic. Furthermore, a new design for elastic metamaterials that can behave either as liquids or solids over a limited frequency range may enable new applications based on the control of acoustic, elastic, and seismic waves. They are also called mechanical metamaterials. Acoustic metamaterials control, direct and manipulate sound in the form of sonic, infrasonic, or ultrasonic waves in gases, liquids and solids. As with electromagnetic waves, sonic waves can exhibit negative refraction. Control of sound waves is mostly accomplished through the bulk modulus beta, mass density rho and chirality. The bulk modulus and density are analogs of permittivity and permeability in electromagnetic metamaterials. Related to this is the mechanics of sound wave propagation in a lattice structure. Also materials have mass and intrinsic degrees of stiffness. Together, these form a resonance system and the mechanical resonance may be excited by appropriate sonic frequencies. Structural metamaterials provide properties such as crushability and light weight. Using projection microstereolithography, Microlattices can be created using forms much like trusses and girders. Materials for orders of magnitude stiffer than conventional aerogel, but with the same density have been created. Such materials can withstand a load of at least 160,000 times their own weight by over-constraining the materials. A ceramic nanotruss metamaterial can be flattened and revert to its original state. Metamaterials may be fabricated that include some form of nonlinear media, whose properties change with the power of the incident wave. Nonlinear media are essential for nonlinear optics. Most optical materials have a relatively weak response meaning that their properties change by only a small amount for large changes in the intensity of the electromagnetic field. The local electromagnetic fields of the inclusions in nonlinear metamaterials can be much larger than the average value of the field. Besides, remarkable nonlinear effects have been predicted and observed if the metamaterial effective dielectric permittivity is very small. In addition, Exotic properties such as a negative refractive index, create opportunities to tailor the phase matching conditions that must be satisfied in any nonlinear optical structure. Terahertz metamaterials interact at terahertz frequencies, usually defined as 0.1 to 10 thz. Terahertz radiation lies at the far end of the infrared band, just after the end of the microwave band. This corresponds to millimeter and submillimeter wavelengths between the 3 mm and 0.03 mm. Photonic metamaterial interact with optical frequencies. The subwavelength period distinguishes them from photonic band gap structures. Tunable metamaterials allow arbitrary adjustments to frequency changes in the refractive index. A tunable metamaterial expands beyond the bandwidth limitations in left-handed materials by constructing various types of metamaterials. Plasmonic metamaterials exploit surface plasmons, which are produced from the interaction of light with metal dielectrics. Under specific conditions, the incident light couples with the surface plasmons to create self-sustaining propagating electromagnetic waves known as surface plasmon polaritons. Metamaterials are under consideration for many applications. Metamaterial antennas are commercially available. In 2007, one researcher stated that for metamaterial applications to be realized, energy loss must be reduced. Materials must be extended into three-dimensional isotropic materials and production techniques must be industrialized.
Metamaterial antennas are a class of antennas that use metamaterials to improve performance. Demonstrations showed that metamaterials could enhance an antenna's radiated power. Materials that can attain negative permeability allow for properties such as small antenna size, high directivity, and tunable frequency. A metamaterial absorber manipulates the loss components of metamaterials permittivity and magnetic permeability, to absorb large amounts of electromagnetic radiation. This is a useful feature for photodetection and solar photovoltaic applications. Loss components are also relevant in applications of negative refractive index or transformation optics, but often are not utilized in these applications. A super lens is a two- or three-dimensional device that uses metamaterials, usually with negative refraction properties, to achieve resolution beyond the diffraction limit. Such a behavior is enabled by the capability of double negative materials to yield negative phase velocity. The diffraction limit is inherent in conventional optical devices or lenses. Metamaterials are a potential basis for a practical cloaking device. The proof of principle was demonstrated on October 19, 2006. No practical cloaks are publicly known to exist. Conventionally, the RCS has been reduced either by radar absorbent material or by purpose shaping of the targets such that the scattered energy can be redirected away from the source. While RAMs have narrow frequency band functionality, purpose shaping limits the aerodynamic performance of the target. More recently, Metamaterials or metasurfaces are synthesized that can redirect the scattered energy away from the source using either array theory or generalized Snell's law. This has led to aerodynamically favorable shapes for the targets with the reduced RCS. Seismic metamaterials counteract the adverse effects of seismic waves on man-made structures. Metamaterials textured with nanoscale wrinkles could control sound or light signals, such as changing a material's color or improving ultrasound resolution. Uses include non-destructive material testing, medical diagnostics, and sound suppression. The materials can be made through a high-precision, multi-layer deposition process. The thickness of each layer can be controlled within a fraction of a wavelength. The material is then compressed, creating precise wrinkles whose spacing can cause scattering of selected frequencies. All materials are made of atoms, which are dipoles. These dipoles modify light velocity by a factor n. In a split ring resonator, the ring and wire units act as atomic dipoles. The wire acts as a ferroelectric atom, while the ring acts as an inductor L, while the open section acts as a capacitor C. The ring as a whole acts as an LC circuit. When the electromagnetic field passes through the ring, an induced current is created. The generated field is perpendicular to the light's magnetic field. The magnetic resonance results in a negative permeability the refraction index is negative as well. Several material models frequency response in DNGs. One of these is the Lorentz model, which describes electron motion in terms of a driven damped, harmonic oscillator. The Debye relaxation model applies when the acceleration component of the Lorentz mathematical model is small compared to the other components of the equation. The Drude model applies when the restoring force component is negligible and the coupling coefficient is generally the plasma frequency. Other component distinctions call for the use of one of these models, depending on its polarity or purpose. Three-dimensional composites of metal-slash-nonmetallic inclusions periodically-slash-randomly embedded in a low-permittivity matrix are usually modeled by analytical methods 
including mixing formulas and scattering matrix-based methods. The particle is modeled by either an electric dipole parallel to the electric field or a pair of crossed electric and magnetic dipoles parallel to the electric and magnetic fields, respectively, of the applied wave. These dipoles are the leading terms in the multipole series. They are the only existing ones for a homogeneous sphere, whose polarizability can be easily obtained from the Mie scattering coefficients. In general, this procedure is known as the point dipole approximation, which is a good approximation for metamaterials consisting of composites of electrically small spheres. Merits of these methods include low calculation cost and mathematical simplicity. Other first principles techniques for analyzing triply periodic electromagnetic media may be found in computing photonic band structure. The Multidisciplinary University Research Initiative encompasses dozens of universities and a few government organizations. Participating universities include UC Berkeley. UC Los Angeles, UC San Diego, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and Imperial College in London. The sponsors are Office of Naval Research and the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency. MORI supports research that intersects more than one traditional science and engineering discipline to accelerate both research and translation to applications. As of 2009, 69 academic institutions were expected to participate in 41 research efforts. The Virtual Institute for Artificial Electromagnetic Materials and Metamaterials Metamorphose 6 Ice Blue is an international association to promote artificial electromagnetic materials and metamaterials. It organizes scientific conferences supports specialized journals, creates and manages research programs, provides training programs, and technology transfer to European industry.